Hello everyone and welcome back to Painting with Martin. Today we are trying out a different angle and I hope you like this one. Instead of a top-down position, I'm trying from the side. And this is a preparation for me buying a new camcorder. And if you like this one, uh, this angle, please let me know in the comments. And if you don't, I'll try to switch it back to the original top-down view. Now today we're going to, uh, to try to paint a dice tower from Feldhair. It comes in two pieces. It's uh, like you, you set it up like this, you take it out, you have it like this, you can store it, you put it like back, like, oh, like, like this. Guess I'm really, really bad at this. <laughs> uh, let's see how to put it back on. Oh. Something like this, yeah, there you go. And it comes in a nice storage box. I'm going to show you a storage box like this. It comes like this, a storage box. I'm going to open it up. And it comes with a set of dice and this like tube. You can store it, store it over here and then over here for the base. And it's like really nice and protected. So um, first thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna paint the, um, the roof. And then we're gonna take a look at the stonework over here. Then going over to the, um, the window or the kind of the window panels. We're also going to paint the stone uh, artwork over here, down here, so in a different way. So let's take a look at what we're going to, we're going to detach it. And then we're going to choose a color that we'd used before another video called um, a citadel color from um, called Contrast Blood Angels Red. And we're going to paint the entire roof with this this nice color. So give it, give it a good shake. You can take an old brush for this one because it's a contrast color. It doesn't really matter if you're using an old or new brush. And of course, with contrast paints, you use them neat. So, uh, as it's a mix with a wash and a base color. And I've pr um, primed this this dice tower in, in white before. And of course, I've given this one another primer with called, what's it called? Um, from Vallejo, um, one, of their uh, one of their primer series. And as you can see here, it's actually looking quite nice in this vibrant red color. You don't want to let it pool in the res in the recesses here, um, like in normal cases, but you actually want it to be quite neat. And I'm trying to avoid the top here as well, if I can. These two, two black spires here. And applying it vigorously over the entire roof top here. And like this. When it comes to the smaller details, you can use a finer brush if you like. And the good thing with this one is that it dries fairly quickly as well. If you make mistakes, you will have a decent opportunity for later on to make it up. Now, before this one has actually time to dry, uh, we're going to apply another set of color. I'm going to put it down over here, close the lid so it doesn't spill all over in case we accidentally hit it. And that means we're going to try a different way here. And this, that is a fluorescent color. Oops. The resin color from uh, Vallejo. I never really used this color before, so it will be a new thing for me. And we'll see if it turns out well. If not, we'll paint it over. And I'm going to apply it directly into the wet paint to try to give it a nice look. And it's designed to bring out some of the vibrant colors here. And it blends in into the, the colors quite well. And we'll see if the effect is actually something we want to keep. Uh, 
and also gives us an opportunity to move around the color the way we want it to go. So this is kind of like starting the, and the game with both a wash and a highlight, which is a little bit unusual. something like this. And don't forget the top here in case we missed it. Something like this. Now we're going to move on directly to the stonework. And for the stonework, in these cases, it might be um, uh, some of the stuff I made mistakes here with, we'll leave that one to dry. But the stone work, we're going to go directly into a technique I started out using when I started painting miniatures, and that is actually um, to paint, give the give it a wash straight away. Um, and I want to facilitate, uh, uh, make it look like kind of like sandstone. So I'm going to try some agro earth shade over the stone work, and it's a, a wash. So we can apply the wash over the entire stonework and we apply it neat. I'm going to try and make sure that it doesn't actually um, so as you can see here now it's starting to look quite okay. Now it may be a little bit too dark now so let me try and see if this was not the right choice. Sometimes it happens. So instead of that, we'll try a sepia wash, which is this one. We'll see if this one has another effect. And if it does, we'll go with this one and we'll simply wait until it's dry. And we'll try that one instead. We'll see the effect. And then you can see the effect here straight away. Yes, I think that's much better. Applied over the entire earthwork, the entire stonework here. You can let it pool in the resources here if you like. And you can simply paint over where I did the agrox earth shake by mistake. So don't do agrox earth shake, earth shade, uh, do a CP wash instead, seraphim sepia if you're using um, Citadel or if you're using Vallejo, just sepia wash. Like this. And this one here is actually a birthday present for a good friend, my best friend. We didn't get a birthday present because I forgot about it, so sorry about that. Um, so, and I picked this one up in Essence Beal. I bought it from from Feldherr. I think they 3D printed it, so normally they do make wonderful inserts. So if you haven't used um, Feldherr's inserts before for your board games or your miniature games, uh, I strongly recommend uh, trying them out. And there will be a link in the description box for their um, for the website as well. Don't forget the arches in the in between here. Make sure you really get into those crevices with this wash. And then of course you'll do the bottom parts as well. And if it's been pooling here before, uh, it doesn't matter. You can just move around the um, the wash. I 
and you should try a little pool here in the kind of like the sides here. If you can. And then the final side here. There you go. And we can also do upper parts here if you want to. So this is what it looks like when it's kind of like before it's dried. And now we're going to turn our attention to the, um, the stonework here. The easiest way is just apply it with a black wash and then dry brush it and that's it. But I want to uh, try and give it a little bit more of a, a color variation. So I'm going to apply something very unusual, which is some Gawthor Brown. Let's see if I can do this. Some know this, some Gawthor Brown from Citadel in a few selected areas. And I apply it neat with a small brush just to try to uh, pick out individual stoneworks here. It can be a little bit here and on the sides. And side and it can be quite difficult to hold it so I simply put my finger in here and turning it around because stones are different shapes and sizes so something like this after this I'm going to apply a different color uh, also to give it some tonal variation and that will be another type of grey which is uh, administratum grey from Citadel. Give it a good shake before you open the bottle. A bit too much perhaps. And simply see not much of the variation between these ones. Just give it a little bit more. Now after that, we'll try a little bit with a stronger gray. So we will try some uh, Mechanica standard gray from Citadel. Do the same thing. This time you see that it's really, really standing out. And doing it uh, kind of like when you paint camouflage patterns, uh, you can really make sure that it's like at different angles and levels. Doesn't have to be perfect. And perhaps over here as well. And then finally, we're going to put in some green to simulate some green texture, some moss growing in. And this is of course entirely optional, but you don't really have to do it if you don't want to. And I recommend going for a very dark green in this one. You can go for Lauren Forest for Citadel. You can also go for uh, Caliban Green. Um, or Gem, um, or for example, Russian uniform from Vallejo, which I'm going to do from over here. And it shouldn't be it shouldn't be too 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 bright. Oh, it's almost like. Uh,
something like this. And while this one dries, you will simply apply the same thing over the crenellations here. But if you want to keep it, you can you can with the crenellations here, like the, kind of like where you get the dice out. I would could, you could also just paint it with cold grey or this one uh, neutral grey, which I'm going to do now. Keep it very simple. So this is what it looks like when the grey one's kind of like finished or bland, but it's kind of like you know you go putting the dice in the beautiful dice in, and then it just rolls out there. So. Um, before everything has time to dry, and it can be quite a tedious process, that's why you paint these in stages, so um, when one thing has finished drying, that means you can immediately go on to the next one and go for the next step of the painting. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to paint kind of like the windows, or whatever you want to call this in English, I'm not entirely certain, please correct me in the comments if I make a mistake. Now, you can paint this in a dark blue, and then build up the highlights in a lighter, lighter tone, or you can simply put them in a very dark uh, kind of like uh, brown and making sure that they're simulating kind of like, like wooden panels. But I'm going to try, and I'll say I'm going to try this F contrast, uh, Citadel Color Contrast Athematic Blue, which is actually giving me the impression that these are kind of like windows. This is a contrast color, which again, just like before with Blood Angels Red, we don't need a um, any wash down or we, we can paint it neat. And I'm going to hold this one up like I did before when I painted these ones. Like I don't actually touch any of the other paint. And I'm going to gently stroke it over. Try not to touch any of the other outlying areas. And it's a very, very subtle effect. And you may need a few. So if I move in over here. You can barely see it. And that's why you need probably one or two layers of this one. Here it's showing a little bit more. And this only works if you painted them white or a very light color before, because they're not gonna, otherwise this contrast color is not gonna see anything. And the subtle color variation here is kind of like providing a nice tonal variation to the very thick colors and vibrant colors of the other ones. I'd recommend putting two or three layers in this one. Put quite a bit of paint on your on your brush and go over it. As you can see, some of the um, st outline stonework from the CP wash hasn't dried fully yet, so we're going to have to wait until we continue with that stage. Don't let it pool in between these holes, if you can. So, back and it's starting to look quite okay. Again putting a few layers make sure that you decide how much of this contrast color you really want on your and if you really really want to you can even put a brush underneath here and touch some of the areas inside if you think that it's not showing enough at least on the two of the sides. Just going to show you the difference here. And 
leave it to dry until it's this one dries fairly, fairly quickly. And it's going to come out looking something like this. It's very hard to see in the camera, but you can see kind of like a tint of blue here. Okay. With this one done, and with this one dry here as well, I'm going to put this one down again. And then I'm going to close the lid of my paint bottle. And then we're going to go into the next stage, which is going to be a dry brush of white. And dry brush this is a nice technique if you haven't used it before. It means you take an old brush. This is from Vallejo's White. You can use Ceramid White from, from uh, Sissendale as well if you want to. You take an old brush. Or you can take a specialized dry brush in this case and use a mini war paint dry brush line. You take uh, most of the paint of the palette, you soak your brush in it, and you take an old, you take some, some kitchen towel and you wipe all of it off the brush until you're left with almost nothing. You can put it on your finger here and it's very subtle. And you're going to dry brush the entire. Oops, where was it? Put it inside here. And dry brush the entire figure, blending the colours here in with the art with the stonework. Applying it vigorously over the entire stonework. Don't be afraid because this, this, this dry brush is designed to actually kind of like really blend it in. If you feel that it's not too much, but it's actually too little, you do it again, but you apply a heavier dry brush, which can be sometimes recommended for this one. You still see some tonal variations here and we're going to apply this one with a wash as well. Now you can see here the tower is here looking quite okay, it's almost dried and we're going to apply a dry brush over the, um, over the tower as well. So clean your brush between, make sure that it's nice and proper and clean. And then we will apply a dry brush with um, Citadel's Everson Scarlet to make sure that we blend in some of the wash with this one. And if some of the white is still showing in this one, don't worry about it. You can do a light dry brush or you can do a heavy dry brush, uh, your choice here. Dry brush the entire rooftop, blending in the sh uh, the shade. This is a good way to actually do that um, if you're using contrast paint, and if especially it's pooling in areas you don't want it. That's what it looks like. Now this one is almost done with comes to the roof. Make sure you clean your brush in between. Leave it aside. And this one is still not dry, so we're gonna make sure we're gonna go over directly to the uh, stonework over here. 
And with this one, we're going to apply a dark wash, which is black wash from Game Wash Vallejo. Give it a good shake and apply it neat. Same thing as before. Hold this one where the dice comes out. Let it pool over. Clearing the upper parts here, which we didn't paint before, to make sure you give it some shadows. The wash is designed to really take out this ones and I kind of like sometimes you can see here in between hopefully you can after what this one is done what the high the kind of like the small highlights we did here in between uh, with the different color variations Don't let it pull too much in the recesses. There we go, we're going to put it down here, hopefully it won't fall. And as you can see here, maybe if some of the wash has pulled over um, where it shouldn't be, so just move it around. and apply the wash over it. From the athematic blue. And before we go into the next stage, we're gonna leave it to dry. And then we're gonna apply the highlights over the stoneworks, as well as the golden cupolas. Now, when the wash is mostly dry, not all of it, but we're going to pay our attention to the uh, stonework, kind of like sandstone artwork, uh, or um, something like it. And we're going to put some dry, Citadel Dry Series Terminata Stone. This is a very thick and grimy uh, looking uh, paint, um, but we're going to paint it um, uh, with a dry brush over the entire, um, kind of like, entire um, sandstone uh, part of the building. Same thing as we did before, dry brush uses an oil brush or a specialized dry brush and you wanted this one to be a very very dry bright, uh, very very light dry brush. So we're going to see how this one pans out. Uh, you wanted to make sure that you blend in all the areas where it looks too thick. And then it gives it kind of like a nice sandstone feeling. And you do this over the entire area here where it shows. When it comes to the uh, bottom part, you can also apply a thick dry brush of Terminata stone over this area. giving it a little bit of shade and contrast. At least a bit of shade at least. You can apply it almost directly from the jar without actually, there's a very, very heavy dry brush. Put 
it blends in very well with the grey. Now with that one done, uh, you can almost directly, immediately uh, apply a darker wash. But you want to make sure that the wash is diluted with water, quite a bit of water, so the wash is much lighter. And you want to play it so it's kind of like dripping down like rainwater. Kind of like a streaking motion that I've used in my other weathering effects video videos. So please take a look at that one. It will be in the link in the description box for this. That concludes. We're not going to paint the base of this one because obviously it's going to be covered by the dye style itself. And there you have this one. You can see it's still dry. It's not still not dried entirely yet. So we're going to turn our attention to the rooftop, and the rooftop is going to be painted gold. And we're going to use um, Citadel color, base colors, Retributor Armor, which is, in my opinion, one of the best gold colors on the market. And apply it neat. Only the spires. Has a very subtle effect, but and if you feel like, for example, over here that it's not um, some of the whites are showing in between, please apply some new red color of your choice over there, either Blood Angel's Red or straight uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. Make sure nothing is showing. And there you go. Uh, same thing if you make mistakes on the way. You can see that I made some mistakes when it comes to painting some gold here on the over, oh, sorry about this, but over here. So that means when the paint is dry you can easily apply some some new uh, red color over it. It shouldn't be a problem. I'll show you how to do that. There you go. Otherwise, this is looking quite okay. And the only thing in the right, right now we're waiting for is um, to dry brush a little bit of uh, gray over the um, the wash over here that's been drying. And final, our final stage will be so to dry brush some terminata stone over the stonework over here on the main dice tower. And it could be that I applied too much of a wash, not to show some of the artwork that it would before. And if so, you can redo the step like I should have done and apply a very light um, 
watered down wash with about one part or two parts wash and an eight parts water. But it looks quite okay as a dice tower. You can do some dry brushing up over here as well. Make sure that everything looks okay. The, the only thing that you need to do here, if you want to, you can put some uh, wash on this one. Make sure that it's not all white. Um, and the other thing you can do is that you should uh, cover this one with some uh, uh, matte varnish when it comes to uh, so you can protect the dice tower, uh, make sure that you know, protect it from wear and tear. And this is actually the dice tower. So if I now attach it, see if I can attach it now properly again. This is the dice tower from from Thumbtower. If you like this video and you want to see more of these videos or other videos, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, subscribe to my video. It really helps me uh, grow and um, continue the channel. Otherwise, I really appreciate you for taking the time today to watch the video. And I hope to see you next time. And thank you very much for watching.